Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so in this lesson, you're going to be creating a bit of rhythm for your track. Now this is gonna be a house beat, and one of the things that defines a house beat is the offbeat hat sound. So let's add that first. So we're gonna use a sample from one of the Cubase libraries for this. So if we come over, make sure our right hand zone is showing, go to the media tab and click the little home button. Then we're gonna to go to loops and samples and scroll down until we find the GASE library, this one here. As you can see, there are many different samples here. These are all what we call one shot drums. So they're just individual drum hits. Now we don't really want to trawl through all of the samples in here because there are a lot of them and look for individual hat sounds. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come up to the search bar up here and type hat. And this will filter out all of the hat samples that are in this particular library. So we can cycle through and try and find a nice hat. I actually quite like this one. So we're going to select it, right click and go create sampler track. Now, normally we'd draw in a blank bit of MIDI and then draw in the notes that will trigger the hat sample. But we're going to be a bit lazy in this case and we're going to copy one of the kick segments. So hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, click and drag the kick MIDI down so it's on the hat channel. And then I'm going to double click to open it. And at the moment, if I play it, actually, let's just turn this down a bit as well. So I'm going to select the hat channel and just come over to the volume, turn that right down. And then if I play it, so you can hear that it's playing on every beat at the moment, which we don't want. We want this to be playing on the off beat, which is a very typical sort of hat sound for a house beat. So if you just select all of those and drag them over half a beat, so they are falling in between the beats called the off beat. And let's play that. Fine, that's perfect. So now what we've got to do is duplicate this so it fills the whole eight bars. So we're just going to make sure it's selected and then press Control or Command D until it fills up the full eight bars. And let's just quickly rename it as well. I'm gonna call this Open Hat and then hold Shift and hit Enter. And that'll rename all of the MIDI as well. Very quickly while we're at it, we'll hold Alt or Option, click on the little colored area and select yellow. And we'll just drag that up so it's with our kick. So all of our drums are gonna to be together. Okay, so the beat is sounding cool, but we really need to add a clap to this. So let's add a clap from the work file. So again, we're going to come over to the right hand zone. I'm just going to clear my selection here, my search selection. Otherwise, that'll be there the next time I come in as well. I'm going to click home and I'm going to go to file browser and it should already be in our audio folder for the work files. And now again, it's doing that strange sort of problem where the files are not actually showing. So I'm going to come down to the bottom here and where it turns into a double headed arrow. I'm gonna click once and then we'll see our files. So I want a sample called snare 01. So just click that. And we're going to right click, create sampler track. And again, it's dropped it into our project. I'll very quickly just color this yellow. Again, by holding Alt or Option, clicking the little colored area and then selecting yellow. And then again, I'm just gonna copy the kick MIDI over. So holding Alt or Option and clicking and dragging the kick. Double click to edit it. And always in house music, the clap always falls on the second and fourth beat in the bar. So we want to delete the first one and delete the third one. And let's just turn it down. So select the snare channel and come to the volume over here. Just turn it down a bit. Let's just play it. So not sounding too bad. Let's just do the same that we did with the hat and duplicate this. So control or command plus D with it selected. So now we've got a full eight bars of proper drum beat. Now just to make things a bit neater because this MIDI still says kick even though it's triggering the snare. So let's just come over here. I'm gonna double click that. I'm not gonna change the name. I'm just gonna hold shift and then hit enter and that'll rename all the MIDI as well. Okay, so it's not sounding too bad, but I wanna take this a step further and add an additional hat and clap sound. Now, the reason we want more than one snare or a hat is so we can use them at different times in the track. So at one point, we might just want a light hat and a clap sound, and then a sort of heavier hat and clap sound in the chorus section, for example. So let's just do that now. Now I'm going to show you in a couple of different ways. So first one I want to do is get a sort of lighter hat sound in, also known as a closed hat. 
So let's go to the media tab in our right hand zone. In the work files, we've got these two loops here. We've got loop 04 and loop 32. So just so you know, you can actually audition loops over the top of the project as well while it's playing. So if I just play this, activate this button here, which is align beats to project. And then when I play the projects and click on the loop sample, it'll automatically play. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So as you can see, it just auditions a loop over the top. Now we're actually going to use top loop 04 here, but we're not going to use all of it. I just want to use the little hat sound. So let's just drag this in as audio to our project. So I'm just going to literally click it, drag it and just drop it into an empty space in the project window. It's going to bring up an options dialog and you want to select yes, copy the file to the project folder and you want to change the sample rate and bit depth as well. So make sure these three boxes are ticked and then click OK. Now, because we have the align beats to project button selected, the loop should automatically fit to the project. So it should fit exactly to one bar. If that isn't the case in your project, you'll need to turn on musical mode, which you can get to in the info line up here. Now, if you don't see this line up here, firstly, make sure you've actually got the loop selected because when you haven't, it's just sort of blank. So we'll select it and then you've got all these sort of extra bits of info about the loop. If you don't see this at all, you need to come up to the little cogwheel with the sort of line next to it, click on that. So just make sure the info line is ticked and then up here with again the loop selected, make sure that is selected and you can just turn on musical mode by clicking this little box here. Now note when I unselect it, the loop now doesn't fit to the project. And when I do select it, it automatically fits to the project. And even if I change the tempo, which I actually do want to do, so let's do that now. So down here on the bottom transport panel, you can just click and drag. We want this to be 124 BPM. So that's fine. So change yours so it's the same. And you'll notice that the loop has stayed at the right speed as well. Okay, so just for now, I'm going to hide the lower zone and the right hand zone, just so we've got a bit more space. I'm going to zoom in, hold in the control or command button and use my mouse wheel. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Now, I only want the hat sound from this loop and I'm just going to turn it down as well. So that doesn't sound very nice with all of that going on. So what we want to do is actually cut out one of these hat sounds, which is falling on the offbeat. So we'll use sort of this bit here. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. The first way is pretty simple. We're just going to click the bottom left control point and drag that in. And then we can do the same with the right hand control point as well, but I'm going to select the scissors tool. So if you just right click to bring up your toolbar and select the split tool, and I'm just going to split right there, and then we can just delete the rest of the loop. Now, one very important thing to do is to use the envelopes, which you can get to with these little triangles in the top left and right corners and it just sort of adds like a volume fade to the sample. Now we don't really want one at the beginning, but we do want one at the end. So that's fine. And then we need to move this into the correct place. So let's start at the beginning. So we want the hat sounds to be on the offbeat. And I'm just going to hold Alt or Option and click and drag these over. And once I've got a few in there, I can just select all of them and copy them over so they fill the full eight bars of our project nice and easy and there we go we've got another hat sound so i'm just going to mute our original hat for now now very quickly before we go any further i just want to quickly explain the difference between audio tracks which is what we're using here and midi tracks which is what we've used up until now to sort of trigger the hat and the snare and the pluck and the kick. So when you add something to the sampler track like we have with the snare, that then becomes playable, meaning that it basically gets mapped out as we've seen in the sampler control window in the lower zone. It gets mapped out on the keys, but when you add it as audio, you don't get this keyboard, so it's not playable. There are advantages to both ways, which we'll kind of unpack as we go through the tutorial, but I just want to make sure you're aware of the most important difference, which is when you add audio to the sampler track, it becomes playable on the keyboard. And when it's just added to an audio track, it isn't playable. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's just make this a bit smaller. We've got our hat sound in there. So one thing that you probably can notice if I just solo the hat and play it on its own, 
you can probably hear that there's actually quite a bit of bass sort of sound in there as well as the high frequencies of the hat sound now we really don't want that so what we want to do is we want to go to the channel settings by clicking this little e button so this is the channel settings for the top loop 04 and then we're going to click on equalizer and we just want to take out the low frequency so when i play this you can see there we've got all these sort of low frequencies now don't worry too much at the moment we will be going into equalization more in depth later on but basically what this represents is the high frequencies over here and the low frequencies over here and everything in between and what we want to do is take out all this sort of low frequency stuff here so what we're going to do is use a low cut so i'm just going to click on this number 12 and change this to 48 which means we get a slightly steeper filter and then i'm going to click and then drag up like so and you can see this is what we're basically going to take out of the hat sound so i'll just play this and you'll notice as i move it further up you can only hear higher and higher frequencies and we want to remove all of that sort of low stuff there so putting the filter up to about there is perfect it's taken all of that out lovely so i can unsolo now and close the channel settings that sounds better so the reason we're removing that low end from the top loop is just to basically keep everything nice and tight so we only really want the high frequencies from the hat and we don't want any low frequencies which are going to interfere with other elements in our track so it's all part of sort of good mixing practice don't worry too much at the moment because we're going to get all into this later on in the course but it's important that you know why we're doing these things as we go through Okay, so very quickly, I'm just going to color this again by holding Alt or Option, click yellow. We'll rename this to Closed Hat, hold Shift and hit Enter. There we go. I'm just going to drag my pluck down so it's at the bottom, just keeping all of our drums together. Okay, now let's do a similar thing. So we're going to use another loop, but we're going to use the clap sound from the next loop. So let's go to our media tab in the right hand zone, and we want to use top loop 32. And we want that little clap sound that's playing in there now i'm going to do it in a slightly different way just to show you how you can use the sampler track to use loops as well so i'm going to right click top loop 32 and create sampler track and in here in the sampler control we have sort of similar settings in a way so we have like a start point over here which is represented by the s so i just click on that and drag it over and all i want to do is isolate basically the little clap sound which we've got there and I'm going to zoom in a bit by holding control and using my mouse wheel just to make sure we get nice and close to this something like that's absolutely fine and then if I scroll all the way out we can see that we've got an end point here as well so we're going to set that so we're only hearing the clap sound now when I play this we can hear that we're only hearing the clap if I have the sample set uh, a bit longer obviously when I play it you'll hear the rest of the loop as well so we just want to keep that nice and short and again you have volume fades as well so these points just above where the s's are are fade ins or fade out and fade in we don't want to add a fade in at the moment we just want the fade out and what we're going to do because we're using this clap in exactly the same position or we want it playing in exactly the same position as the snare so i'm just going to highlight all of that snare midi up there and i'm going to hold alt or option click and drag that down so it's on my top loop 32 track which i'll quickly rename clap 01 hold shift and enter and color it yellow lovely okay so let's just mute our snare so we've only got a new clap sound playing i'm just going to play that that's a little bit loud so let's turn it down So what I want to do here is also remove a bit of the low end of the clap. Now I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. And although we can do it from the channel settings by going into it and using a filter again, I'm going to do it in a slightly different way this time and use the sampler control. So in the sampler control, make sure you've got the clap 01 selected and we've got the lower zone showing the sampler control tab and we're going to activate the filter and we're going to use this filter to take out some of the low frequencies so what we need to do is change the shape to a high pass 24 so hp 24 and then we're going to use the cutoff so at the moment if i play it you won't actually hear let's just solo the clap 
you won't hear anything because all the frequencies are being cut out, but I'll just play it and bring this down. So as you can hear, this is basically taking out all of the lower frequencies and we just gotta balance it correctly so it's only taking out the sort of low frequencies. And somewhere around 614 hertz is absolutely perfect. So let's leave it like that. Now it's just another way of removing frequencies from something. So just wanted to show you that. And then we got our track. Starting to sound pretty decent or starting to sound at least like a proper house track. So just one last thing that I want to do and that is our original open hat sound. Let's just go to that and unmute it and solo it. So if you listen very closely, you can hear that there are sort of some lower frequencies going on there and we want to take those out. So let's just select the track and go into the channel settings and we'll use the normal filter again this time. Now if I play it, you can see that even though it's a hat and it's mostly high frequencies, it's also got some low frequencies going on as well, which we want to remove for exactly the same reasons. We just want to keep everything nice and tight. So I'm going to change this low cut filter here to 48 dB slope, click and then drag this up. I'll just do it as it's playing. So somewhere around there is perfect. Now I can actually bypass this if I want. Hopefully you can hear it's quite clearly taking out quite a bit of the lower frequencies and just making it a lot tidier. Okay, so that's perfect. Let's just unsolo that, go back to our track. We can unmute our original snare as well. And it sounded pretty decent. So just a note here, what we're doing is obviously just adding more and more content to our track and building everything up, which we will then use to arrange our track later on. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at applying effects to all of these sounds to make a nice juicy mix. Thanks very much for watching guys and girls. See you in the next one.